Okay, today I'm gonna to tell you one thing that you might not know about me, but maybe you do know about me, maybe you figure it out. Raven, we already know you're secretly Batman, okay? I'm secretly Batman. I found out that secret like a month ago, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, here's a secret. I like to fight. <laughs> now, that may come across as being aggressive. Now, when I was younger, it was aggressive. I liked to fight, like physically fight when I was younger. In fact, I was a bar bouncer, and the only reason why I became a bar bouncer is so I could fight people. I became a guardian angel because I wanted to test myself. I used to hit, use a saying that goes, I, like, I wanted to test myself where bone meets flesh. I wanted to, to see what worked and what didn't work. And I got the experience that I bargained for, I really did. And um, I, don't, I wouldn't take any of it back. But now, today, that's not the kind of fight I like to do. In fact, I don't like to fight like that at all anymore. Uh, it hurts, it doesn't feel too good, um, and uh, my body is already banged up enough as it is. But the way I like to fight is bad times, hard times, extremely hard times. The times when I wanna quit, that's when I like to fight. The times when I'm, I'm ready to give up, pack it in, ready to, to, to totally um, uh, cash in my chips, quit, lay down, be, be dormant and, and be complacent. That's when it comes out of me. That's when the monster comes out and I'm like, ugh, it's time to fight. And that's what I like. I like that because, you know, your life, it should be on purpose. It should have a purpose. It, it should, it, you should be fighting on purpose. And, you know, life is worth fighting for. Your, your dreams are worth fighting for. Your, um, your day, just your day, having a good day is worth fighting for. Your mood is worth fighting for. Your mental health is worth fighting for. Your everything, everything, in my opinion, is worth fighting. And the harder it gets, the more I like it. In fact, I even wrote a song called Hard Things. I do hard things. I like to do hard things, I want to do hard things, I need to do hard things, and when I'm not doing hard things, I feel like I'm getting soft. And when I'm getting soft, I'm getting weak. And when I'm getting weak, I'm getting complacent. When I'm getting complacent, you might as well put me in the ground because complacency is, is equivalent to death, in my opinion. Death of a dream. And I'm not willing to die like that. So you gotta ask yourself, what is my purpose? Why am I here in the first damn place? Well, I can tell you what it is. And you're gonna have to pardon my French. I am in the dojo, I don't like to use profanity, but occasionally I like to, to, to use it to emphasize something. Here's what it is. Here's what you're supposed to be doing. And I want you to write this down in your brain. Put it down, burn it into your brain. Here's what you're supposed to be doing. Making life your bitch. Okay, that's one dollar. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Make your life your bitch. You are supposed to rock this. Every single day, you're supposed to rock this. Every day in every way, you're supposed to fight. It's just not right if you're not. You gotta take care of business. You gotta take care of business, or what Elvis Presley would call TCB, taking care of business. Or like I call it in one of my books, I call it the TCB warrior, taking care of business warrior. You gotta take care of business. So how do you take care of business? One, you gotta define your purpose. And to find it, you gotta define it. And your purpose can be just that, just what I said. I'm gonna make life my bitch. Is that too harsh? Not harsh enough. Not harsh enough? It's the truth. And sometimes the truth is harsh. What's your purpose? You have to define it. My purpose is to thrive. It's not enough for me just to say I want to be happy. I do want to be happy. And I am happy, I gotta tell you. <laughs> but I want to be happy. I want to thrive. I want to be glad to be alive. I want to wake up every single day and go, yes, it's time. 
I hear the bell. Hands up, chin down. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. And if I'm not waking up like that, that means I'm slipping into complacency. When I'm slipping into complacency, then I feel close to death. When I feel close to death, guess what it makes me want to do? Fight. Fight for my life. I can't feel like I'm complacent. That's a weak man's game. <clears throat> Find your purpose by defining it. Next, get some structure in your life. We can't have willy-nilly just going around. You can never win a chess game if you go willy-nilly. I don't know if you were around when I did this before, but I knew, uh, I know you were. And I was like, I tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna play willy-nilly style. And what I call willy-nilly is I'm just gonna move wherever, whenever, and I'm not gonna think about it. I'm just gonna go la 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 and move my chess pieces just wherever. That's when I lose. When I play chess willy-nilly, I lose. No, 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 no. But play me in chess when I'm thinking. When I'm a thinking man. It's hard to beat me because I'm thinking about every move I make, every breath I take. I think about every little section, every little thing. I get structured. And your life should be just as structured. And you guys are structured. That's part of the benefit of this thing, whole thing, this whole experience, this whole experiment. Your life gets structured. If you're not waking up every morning and going, okay, I'm going to go A, at this time, B at this time, C at this time, D at this time, and E at this time, then you're not as structured as I think you should be. Ask some of these guys, what did I do when I was being a mentor? First thing in the morning, show up. What did I do, Kev? Time to write out the schedule. Eat breakfast, 8 a.m. Go to the gym, 9 a.m. Be back from the gym, 10.30. Library, 11 a.m. Back on, back at the ranch, 12 p.m. And we followed it. Well, I can't, can you like be a mentor again? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm better at this stuff. Wake up at 8 a.m.? No, we would have breakfast at 8 a.m. We would get up at the same time. Oh, okay, okay. And get up at we the same time. We'd get up at 3 a.m. <laughs> We'd no. get up at the same time. 5.45 a.m., you're up. Up and moving. Same, same thing. Not me, man. I need one alarm. I don't even need that, to be honest with you. I, make, I wake up most of the time before my alarm goes off. I've trained my body, you know, at 5 a.m., my eyes come open. But it takes some time to train that way. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. You've got to train yourself to do it. But 5 a.m., my eyes go bing, even on the weekends. <laughs> my, it drives my wife crazy because she'll be like, tomorrow we're going to sleep in. I'm like, 5 a.m., I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> I can sleep in, but I'm getting my butt up. <laughs> Does she sleep in? No, I don't sleep in. She sleeps in, yes. No, 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 I'm saying. Does she sleep in? Yes. No, you don't. Yes, I don't. I don't. So I get up, I clean, do the dishes, do whatever else needed to be done where the kids didn't do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's being a good, a good husband. And good a husband, father. a good father. Such as you... As such as are you, your habitual thoughts, such also will be the, the character of your mind, for the soul is died by the thoughts, says Marcus Aurelius, one of the great Stoics. The last of the, the, last of the good emperors of Rome. Yeah, that's right. He wrote a great book called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. It's fantastic. I recommend you read it. It's definitely worth it. So get structure in your life. If you have no structure, you're, you're going willy-nilly. You're playing the chess game willy-nilly. <laughs> willy-nilly is not the way we play chess. 
You will never win a chess game if you go willy nilly style. What if you go nilly willy? No, well, you can't win it if you go nilly willy either. <laughs> no willy nilly. No, no nilly willy. No, no, nothing. No, no willies at all. <laughs> you got to go full will powers. You got to go full cognitive ability, full thinking. So structure is so important with your life. If you don't have structure, I don't, I don't know what you're doing with your time. You don't know what you're doing with your time. You're coming up with it on the, 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 at the, uh, by the seat of your pants. You can't get anything done that way. The next thing is get a goal. And then we've all been working on our goals, what we're going to do with our goals in our, in our life and how we can achieve our goals. And if you haven't done that yet, please uh, write them down, bring them to me. We will work it out because I want to see your goals. I have goals sitting on my desk in my office, just sitting there staring me in the face. Those same goals are on my mirror at my house, listed out on my mirror with a dry erase marker. Um, I used to keep them in my pockets, and sometimes I do keep them in my pockets, uh, what I'm gonna do for the day. Believe me when I tell you, I know exactly what I'm gonna do today to get me closer to one of the goals that I have in my mind. I've already been working on it all day long, to be honest with you, to be totally frank. So, do you have goals? Yes, you have goals. Do, what, do you have goals for today to get you closer to your goal? I mean, it, what is a day if you, if you waste it? I mean, you can't get today back. We've talked about that before. This is, this is a limited time that you have here. We don't have time to waste. No time to goof around. No time to play. It's go time. The time you know what time it was, when it was time for you to play? When you were a kid. Sure, when you were a kid, you were playing. It's playtime when you're a kid. Playtime's over. Now it's work time. It's hard time. It's go time. It's fight time. That's the time it is. It's game time. But it's not playtime. Playtime's over. Sleeping in's over. All of that is over. It's now time to lace up the cleats. It's time to lace up the gloves. The bell has rung. Hands up, chin down. Forward motion, be aggressive. Circle, work your angles. It's time to fight. That's the time it is. It's time to make Life, your bitch. Get a goal. Life can be meaningful enough to justify its suffering when you have a goal. If you don't have a goal and you think that it's just playtime, then life is suffering all the time. But life can be so fulfilling if you just work on your purpose, if you work on your structure, and you work on your goal, life is fulfilling enough to justify the suffering. Let's face it, we're adults now. Suffering is part of it. Having a rough time, it's part of it. There's no getting around it. Time to sell the toys. Time to give up the underoos. <laughs> time to put them in a lockbox or a display case if that's what you want to do to remember your childhood, but it's time. It's time to man up. Huh? Being a Trekkie? I didn't say anything about being a Trekkie. Yes. Sharky. Sharky? No. He doesn't want to get rid of Sharky. Yeah. That's the whole point of the speech. You need to. Time to get rid of things that are keeping you a toys. Time to get rid of things that are keeping you a kid. You're no longer a kid. They don't serve you anymore. They don't serve you anymore. Well, if they don't, yeah. They, well, they don't serve you anymore. You know why? Because it's time for the game to start. Oh man, I lost it's not pre time anymore. It's not play time. We're not pretending anymore. When we were a kid, we used to pretend. We used to play, pretend to be a fireman, pretend to be a superhero, pretend to be 
uh, an athlete, pretend to be whatever it was. You were playing, but playtime's over. It's not time to play anymore. It's time to get real, time to keep it real. We used to play business. We used to play G.I. Joe. We used to play whatever it was, whatever fantasy, Dungeons and Dragons. Hey, we just, play, we just played that last night. What I'm trying to tell you is it's time to put away childish things. I'm not saying you can't ever play Dungeons and Dragons or, or video games or, or Monopoly or whatever. Sometimes we need a little escape. I'm saying the bane of your existence can no longer be childish things. Because life is hard. Get hard. Live hard. Live hard. Be hard. Don't be soft. Do something meaningful with your life. Do something meaningful. Even a happy life cannot be without a measure of darkness. The very word uh, uh, happy lo uh, sorry, it loses its meaning. The very word happy loses its meaning if it were not for if it wasn't balanced by sadness. And suffering. Suffering forges the steel into a sword. Forges your soul sword. We have to live life as men. Move forward as men. And here's another little secret. You can't do it for anyone else. You can't do it for me. You can't do it for your parents. You can't do it for a loved one. In my case, I, couldn't, I can't do it for my kids. I can't do it for my spouse. It has to be because of me, for me. Why? Because I came into this world alone, bare, butt-ass naked, screaming and hollering, yelling and fighting for my life, gasping, trying to take my, fresh, my first fresh breath of air, freezing and in pain. That's how I came into this world, and so did you. You think a baby's crying because it's not in pain? No, it's in pain. Just squeeze through it the tight spot. Suffered the temperature of the cold for the very first time. A tube jammed down to the child's throat and pulled out the embryonic fluid. Cutting of the of the of, umbilical, of cord. The umbilical cord, which is essentially their breathing system, their feeding system, breathing system, everything. It gets cut, slap. And you get a scar from it that you'll have to rip your life. It's called your belly button. I, I know. You come out of the womb, bare butt ass naked. You can't hardly see. You've been in darkness your whole entire life. You come out and all of a sudden, bang! Lights are everywhere. You haven't heard much of anything but muffled sounds. It's quiet in the womb. You come out and the sounds are blaring. You're in pain. You're suffering. If you're a male ch a child, shortly thereafter, about 45 minutes later, they take you in to get, get your, your wing wang whacked off. All the skin around your wing wang whacked off. You think they put you out for that? No, they don't put you out for that. You come in this world and it's suffering right from the beginning. You get to grow up, guess what? You get to fall, you have to learn how to crawl. You fall down, you hit your head, you bang yourself, it's suffering. So what do you do? You learn how to play. Play is good, but you know what play is doing? Rehearsal for real life. Playing is nothing more than rehearsal for real life. Pretending to be a construction worker. Pretending to be a policeman. Pretending to be a lawyer. Pretending to be a superhero. Pretending to be a missionary. Pretending to be whatever it is you're in. A businessman. Pretending oh, to be whatever. An author. Pretending to be whatever it is. Pretending to be a, a dragon. Whatever it is you're pretending to be, it's rehearsal for real life. But now, as an adult, the rehearsal is over. The dress run is over. It's now time to live life. 
And by the way, you can't live life as, as Mr. Nice Guy all the time either. Here's a hard lesson that I had. Mr. Nice Guy finishes last. Mr. Nice Guy gets exploited. You can't be Mr. Nice Guy. You can't do it for other people. And I'm not saying you'd be Mr. Jerk either. You gotta be right in the middle. Sometimes you gotta stand up for yourself, hold strong boundaries and go, you know what, it's not my time to wash the damn dishes. It's your freaking time. So why are you being a lazy ass? Get off your ass and do the freaking dishes. That's what you have to say sometimes. You have to be an asshole sometimes. Why? Because other people will walk all over you. And go, I'm not gonna do it, it's not my, no, the hell it isn't, it's your responsibility. That's what men do. Oh, really? I call that the grand poobah effect. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, I didn't know that, but... but uh, <laughs> I literally had this conversation with a couple of other clients. Really? Yeah. Well, that's the grand poobah effect. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying that because we're men. Men do men things. Men do men things. We're not boys anymore. Is that still going? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> this is good stuff. I want to get this caught on tape. <laughs> it's time. It's time. So you can't be Mr. Nice Guy all the time. If someone's stepping on your boundaries, by God, say something. You don't have to be a jackass to do it either. But you can say something. If someone's being a lazy ass, then they're being a lazy ass. They know they're being a lazy ass. And if this is, a, is an issue, which it shouldn't be, I, I can't even fathom that. But if it is an issue, then don't be a lazy ass. What the freak? Do you pull your share? Why, why the hell wouldn't you? That makes no damn sense. But anyway, um, you can't always be Mr. Nice Guy. You have, to, you have to stand up for yourself. You can't do it for other people either. You have to keep it real about your feelings. It's okay to say what's on your mind. It's not okay to be rude. It's not okay to be an asshole. But it's okay to say what's on your mind with tact. It's okay to say, look, dude, and I'm just using the dishes as an example, uh, uh, you know. You can say, look, dude, this, it's your turn to do the dishes, man. I'm not going to pull your weight. And if they act like a baby, then they're being a baby. <laughs> they're being a boy. Like, when are you going to grow up? When are you going to act like a man? Another thing is, is comparing yourself. Comparing yourself to others is the thief of joy. The minute you start comparing yourself is the minute that you start losing a little something in yourself. Remember the, the story about being going to Atlanta. You may start your trip to Atlanta, Georgia, and I pick, I'm picking Atlanta because it's the furthest, I guess Jacksonville is a little further. Yeah, we did that, yeah. yeah. We'll say Jacksonville. Let's say you're going to Jacksonville, Florida. Home of Leonard Skinner. You want to get to Jacksonville. You start here in Utah. Maybe your friends started before you and they, they started traveling down the road. When you get on the road is when you get on the road. You can't stop the fact or change the fact that they left before you. Or leaving after you. But you just get on the road and it's up to you. You have several choices. You could stay steady and go drive straight through. Just stop for a couple bathroom breaks and some lunch and dinner and then you just keep driving. You don't stop. That's one way. You'll get there quicker. You'll get there 
faster. You, you, you set a schedule, you stick to the schedule, you go for it, you stay on it, you stay disciplined, you drive, you drive and you drive and you keep going. That's one way. Another way to get to Jacksonville is to take the scenic route. Yeah, you can take the scenic route. It can take a lot longer time, but don't be complaining when you're, somebody else is ahead of you. And they took the short, they, they took the, the straight on route. Don't complain because yours is four or five hours longer than theirs or two to two or three days longer than their, their trip. But you'll get there. But here's another time. Here's another thing. You could make it a vacay. <laughs> you could make the whole trip a vacay. I'm going to see the country. I'm going to see every state. I'm going to spend a little time in every state. That could be you. You could do that. But don't get mad when, when someone else gets to Jacksonville before you. And don't get, oh, oh, you know what? My driving skills aren't nearly as good. No. Guys, we are what we make ourselves. Our trip is our trip because we make it that way. It's called karma. Karma literally means cause and effect. You are what you are because you made yourself who you are. Every choice you've made has led you here. Every choice you're going to make is leading you where you're going. There's no two ways around it. That just is what it is. Your karma has brought you here. I mean, in this moment. I don't mean here in this dojo, but it also means that too. But it brought you to this moment. So if you're on your way to Jacksonville, Florida, and you make a choice to stay at a restaurant for four or five hours and chit chat, then that's cool. But that's your karma that you're going to be four or five hours late. That's your karma. So when you compare yourself to someone else, it's ridiculous. You can't compare yourself unless you leave with them and you're in the same car. You can't compare yourself and you're never going to be in the same car. Everybody's on their own trip, man. <laughs> that sounds very 60s of me. <laughs> Everybody's on their own trip, man. But I mean it in a different way than the, the 60s might would mean it. <laughs> oh. And here's the final thing. No mercy. No mercy. And you should say, yes, sensei. Yes, sir. <laughs> Life deserves no mercy. Life deserves no mercy. Be a monster. Be an absolute life savage. Be an undefeated, unscared, valorous warrior towards life. No mercy. It's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. That's the old saying. It's better to be a warrior in the garden than a gardener in a war. Treat life with no mercy. What I mean by that, if you have a goal, no mercy. Yes, sensei. Yes, sensei. Yes, sensei. That's right. <laughs> Opponent is enemy. Enemy is enemy. If you have a dream, give life no mercy. If you have a goal, give life no mercy. It deserves no mercy. It will give you no mercy. Does life not beat you down? Does not life get you down? Didn't you come into this world? It gave you no mercy, no quarter. Life does not favor the weak. It favors the strong. Despite what the Bible says, the weak do not inherit the earth. I thought it was the meek. Yes, I changed it to weak. Okay. The weak do not inherit the earth. The strong inherit the earth. 
but, but be meek at the same time. <laughs> but not weak. Our time for boys are over. It's time to be men. It's time to let the balls drop and let them swing again. <laughs> uh, yes! Because they're steel. Because they're steel. If doing things like doing the dishes hurts your feelings, then you're a baby. Get off your ass. Makes no damn sense. If you're not pulling your weight, you're being a baby. Get off your ass. Makes no damn sense. No mercy. No mercy. No mercy. Okay. <laughs> You're fired up today. I love you guys. I love you guys. And, I, and I'm fired up, man, because I want to see you guys thrive. And I want you to be just as on fire for life that I am. Because if I can do it, you can do it. Yes, sir. I mean, I came from nothing, guys. I lived in a little shack. I had no food. I was poisoned and I was killed. I was chased down by a crazed man with a firearm. I was beaten up. I was raped. Why can I do it? Because I have no freaking mercy. Actually, I'll, I'll double down on that. I have no motherfucking mercy! I have no mercy! It will not beat me! That's what I want you guys to be. Life will not beat me! I will go out of this life screaming and fighting for every single second I have. It will not beat me. Don't let it beat you. You're just as strong as I am. You just have to find it. Just have to find it. Okay? All right. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you.